Hey guys, and welcome back to Twitch's Kerbal Space Program, where those of you who have been with me for long enough to remember this scene here, the travesty on Juno, will know that I have been a little bit lax when it comes to training up my Kerbals here. So, to that end, I have made this vessel. Uh, I am calling it the Big Ass Deployment Aerospace Shuttle System or badass for short, or, as it has been lovingly called by the Kerbals here, the Moon Pig. You currently join me in phase one of development, where we seem to be having a little bit of issue with the launching clamps. It took me a little while to figure out. I thought I would do the standard hit space until the, the vessel comes free of everything, but I forgot to turn my engines off, so everyone died. It was a bit of a travesty. But a good way to open up an episode! Woo! Despite many a tweak in the VAB, launch test number, test launch even, number two goes much the same way as test launch number one, or at least the beginning bit. Uh, you can see down the bottom there that the test clamps are actually getting caught in the bulky gap between the X2s there. You see where it flares out at the bottom. It was actually getting caught on that. Something to, uh, to, to deal with later. But the launch is but one area of the test. We have many other parts to, to, to put through its paces trying to not use the word test so often but this is a testing process so the word test is going to come up quite often and whilst we're reaching for the sky let's talk about the, the uh, construction here you'll see in the middle we've got two orange tanks with a main sail underneath that is of course the main bulk of this lifting apparatus here uh, around the outside we've got orange tanks with the x2s underneath four of those definitely built for pushing uh, we're, we're leaning over here now this is mainly to get over water um, now, one thing that I have noticed right here is these side tanks were supposed to jettison as well. And somehow, somehow, I haven't put any decouplers on. So that is something else that we need to tweak in the VAB. Um, but th this is all good. Uh, I decide at this point that, okay, we're, we're not even going to get up into orbit, so we can't quite test that bit. But let's test the landing process. Rich Malkerman is, is taking over here. Obviously, with the rockets pointing downwards flying this is a little bit more awkward than would be a, a normal up and down rocket i kind of wish i had put a command pod or a docking port on the bottom of this vessel or the top either way it doesn't matter just so i had somewhere that was in line with the velocity vector to work with instead what i've got to work with is the front and back of the vessel it's not impossible like anyone who's worked with vtols before will know how these things fly but it is quite annoying here Though this slow descent does give us chance to have a look at the makings of the Moon Pig itself, you will see that we have one of these uh, three-man compartments, uh, top and bottom, or at least front and back, depending on how you want to look at this craft. I always see the engines as pointing downwards. Um, and in the middle we have a lander can. Um, there are parachutes everywhere, obviously to try and ease our flight into the water but I have done uh, a little bit of a sneaky with the engines on the side so I've attached them with the cubic octagonal struts I've just put them on the side not the octagonal the cubic tiny ones and then just put the nuclear engines on those and pointed them down using the rotational gadgets this does mean there is a very slight bit of part clipping going on between the side of the rockets and the side of all the tanks and stuff um, now, if you're wondering where the fuel is, you can see on the top of the vessel there, we have the hitchhiker's canister with two of the tiny two meter fuel tanks either side that the engines are attached to. And then we have, as I've already pointed out, the command pods back and forth. Uh, this amount of um, parachutes I thought was going to be enough. To be honest, now that I think thought about it properly, it is enough. But we've got collision issues, as I have spoken of before. I have a plan. But we have collision issues. So now off to the VAB to play with important things like the launch clamps at the bottom and put more parachutes all over the top. And of course, play with the position of the ears because that, that is just so important to get the, the, the correct sort of look to the vessel. So time for the te next test, next launch, next set of explosions. Oh, so I'm not sure what was going on there. Well, I am sure now, but at the time I wasn't sure. All that I saw was massive explosions and bouncing engines going everywhere. So let's go over and watch this one because it seems to have got itself into a nice little situation here. Boom, well, that was fun. Anyway, it was a nice little, little distraction. Let's revert back to launch and see what was actually going on there. A uh, quick snoop around shows me that somewhere uh, symmetry went off and you can see I've got a launch clamp in the bottom there pointed in the wrong direction going into my main engine nacelles down at the bottom. Nacelles? They're not really nacelles, are they? Things on the side could possibly be, but that's, that's really not it. So we need to go and sort all that out. Back to the VAB, back to sorting out stuff. 
this test flight is all about testing the landing mechanism. So I have a theory that it's all about the collision problems, but I want to make sure that I'm not just hitting the floor too hard. So I've put all these extra parachutes on. We're going to just literally like put our way over to the water like this and just separate off. Uh, we have obviously a, a series of stages that need to be tested. Uh, the first one being launch. I think we've now shown that that's working fine. Uh, the next critical one is, of course, the landing. Uh, and everything else is just kind of counting up Delta Vs. So we're coming down nice and nice and gently now. And yes, we can confirm that it is a collision issue, not because we were going down too hard. Um, we're going to have to revert because we lost a whole load of kerbals in this situation. So the next test is very much to try and deal with that collision issue. Uh, so as I had explained previously, these nuclear engines on the side here are attached with those tiny cubic struts, which to me says it can be fixed with Kerbal Attachment System. Uh, there's a tiny part that can be got by, by picking up or grabbing even as is the parlance of the mod. So let, let's try that. Let's get up to high enough where we can get to uh, EVA get one of our kerbals out and see if we could possibly move these engines. Now my greatest hope here was I was going to pick one up and it would stick to my back with the, the, the strut on my back and then the engine sticking far out. But I seem to be having a lot of troubles here. Uh, you'll see that I've even gone down and hovered over the front of that parachute because I know the parachutes can be picked up and there is just no kerbal attachment system drop down menu I, I i right clicking everywhere just just nothing is happening i'm trying to see if anything is like fired in the toolbar that it shouldn't have happened uh and it turns out that yes there was a great big issue i had to go all over the internet and find out and somehow my module manager had been removed from my game data folder so yeah that, that that's what's happening there if any of you have this same issue where you cannot pick up stock parts that's what's going wrong go and check your game data folder and look for the module manager so after fixing that particular issue by downloading a new copy of Kerbal Attachment System, pulling the module manager out of its zip folder and putting it into my game data, I decided to come out and try again. Uh, so we find ourselves up at like 60 kilometers, trying our best to be as far enough out of the atmosphere that when we get a Kerbal on EVA, he doesn't immediately shoot off. And you will see that, yes, suddenly we can do it. But there are issues of collision again. Uh, so I think we're gonna have to do some tweaks. If you look top down, you'll see that these engines are ever so slightly pushing into the command modules, and that is something that needs to change. Of course, we will go to the VAB and enact that change right away. So with almost all the major kinks on launch and landing sorted out, I think it's time that we tried our first actual moonshot. Uh, you'll notice the tanks around the outside now filter down in an asparagus system rather than a feed to the middle system. Uh, this is just, I don't know, me being a little bit pedantic, I could, I could squeeze a little bit of extra Delta V out of it, so I was going to do so. Uh, I do have to point out that this vessel is massively over spec, like massively over spec. You need something like, I don't know, you need something like 10 kilometers Delta V to go to Juna, and this has got something like 13 kilometers Delta V, like so massively over spec that it's a bit hard to go into details of, of how over spec it is. But you'll notice that we still have our main pushing engine or like the central core here. When this was really supposed to only be for atmospheric flight, you'll see that I've got the white tank just above it there. That was supposed to be going for the transfer between here and the moon. But wait, wait, waste not, want not, as the, uh, the saying goes. I have an awful lot of fuel here and I'm not going to just dump it into orbit as I don't actually, as I have not actually applied a probe to the middle core. So it will be useless. It will just be a bit of dead junk that I'll have to try and meet up with and pump out and then have to deal with this massive beam off going around in a fairly low orbit. Got quite a useful orbit, in fact, one of my most mainly used orbits. Uh, so we're coming in for a standard approach vector here, or what I consider a standard approach vector here. Trying my best not to get too close to the moon, um, even though now that I think about it, I would have probably preferred to have a collision course so that I could get rid of this orange tank. As, as we all know, crashing things into the surface of the moon is the cleanest way to deal with space junk, or at least it is for me anyway. So we'll set up an alarm clock and just whiz our way forwards, making sure we're pointed in roughly the right direction you know we don't want to muck around too much when we get into the sphere of influence we do have a few things to deal with after all but of course none of those things are as important as getting this vessel down nice and safe and sound uh, i took the intervening time to lay down a maneuver node on the periapsis of 
out approach vector as we you know it's nice to have these things laid out as soon as possible and the cold wasted voids of space in between Juno and Kerbin sorry not Juno and Kerbin Kerbin and the moon uh, give me a lot of time to plan stuff okay so standard insertion burn didn't quite manage to get the orange tank onto the moon there a little bit annoyed about that but you know we all have debris that kind of flies out into the voids and in fact that that particular piece of debris was just going to go and i believe it left Kerbin's sphere of influence at some point which is uh, quite nice quite nice okay so we're coming in for a standard landing here we're, we're coming down nice and low and just trying to nullify our entire horizontal velocity i was aiming for that ridge over there because i'd overshot the planes that i was aiming for and it all went a little bit wrong i forgot how absolutely useless the poodle was when you're coming in for slowdowns but th that's all fine we, we dumped the poodle after we'd used all the fuel and moved on to these four nuclear engines now these were a little bit unwieldy as i've been explaining beforehand you can't look at your prograde or retrograde mark you've got to be looking like radially um, and, and that's a bit difficult when you're on your surface marker because well surface uh, velocity readout because those radial points do not show which means I have no idea how much I'm drifting left right forwards backwards uh, I'm trying to do everything just by just by eye and as we all know that is quite difficult uh, I am indeed slipping over the surface of the moon here at quite a pace when I brought myself down to like the hang point at the bottom of the parabola there it seemed like I was still traveling at something like seven maybe eight meters per second that is unacceptable nothing in this landing can take that as you can see here so revert back to the uh, the VAB we've got to get this right there were no major changes to the vessel design as I thought almost entirely this was down to pilot error although there was a couple of shuffling around with some of the components and this has had consequences that I did not foresee at the time uh, I just had to make sure I was coming down straight this time rather than coming down at an angle, which I managed to do thanks to the horizontal speed readout you now see on the top right uh, of my screen there using the Kerbal Engineer. Now, I dropped an, en an engine here and I was like, well, that's not too good, but I could deactivate the engine on the opposing corner, balancing out the total thrust. That should, in theory, completely balance out any issues that I would have had losing an engine, maybe even if we removed the opposite corner so that even all the weights balanced out. But but it's uh, PR time, time to lay down a flag. Uh, what do we have here? Well, we have the Kerbal's Grand Day Out, or at least we will do as soon as the map animation catches up. It is one of the slowest points in the game, uh, aside from landing back on Kerbin. But the, uh, the, the, the note here is the Moon Pig lost a foot. Not great, not great at all. Uh, so let's catch some, some quick science. Always up for getting some science. Uh, we would, of course, be doing contracts if there are any available for the moon but at this point in the game it, it's all a bit far reaching the contracts rather than being so close uh, and we're having a little bit of trouble getting into this hatch here now it's all about just lining yourself up and going directly for the hatch uh, do not try to go for the ladder because it will just spin you out so after a little bit of time i've collected three kerbals outside and we go back to the moon pig to get other people and we're missing kerbals uh, there, there are only three of them here uh, this, of course, was most disheartening. Uh, I, I'd done some changes in the VAB, which, of course, meant everybody got removed. Uh, th this was, as I say, very disheartening. Perhaps the most disheartening part of this entire process was the fact that because I'd taken Kerbals out and thus moved away from the ship and done all sorts of other weird things, uh, I, of course, couldn't revert back. Uh, th this meant that well, the best course of action open to me was I'd actually made a quick save out in the just coming into the sphere of influence of the moon so we're going to have to deal with it from that point there and after playing with the maneuver nodes a little bit I found the ideal ejection burn basically I wanted to uh, miss the gravity turn around the moon and just go careening out uh, the, the sphere of influence so hopefully as close to this hemisphere of the sphere of influence because obviously it is a sphere so we want to try and keep on this side of it so that we can bring ourselves down to less than 100 kilometers into the, the Kerbin's atmosphere 36 sounded absolutely brilliant to me and we're just going to come down as fast as possible and of course with only the three Kerbals in that front command pod there we don't really have to worry about the fate of the lander can in the middle not the lander can the hitchhikers can in the middle so we didn't have to go through the whole uh, separation process uh, we're just trying to get down as quick as possible and save these guys here uh, now obviously parachutes being parachutes this is a long time but with 10 meters to go this is all good a bit smashed up we can deal with that take that on a chin as a small expense at uh, our silliness so here we have the fully modded fully tweaked fully completed and fully made sure everything is working version of the moon pig 
Uh, I've even added some little struts on the bottom of the thing to stop the engines falling off. Uh, everything just looks amazingly well. I have made sure that we have all 13 Kerbals in here. I could go through their names, but I can't remember them all. Following a standard lift and transfer, the only thing I want to point out here is look how close the moon is to the sun. Not that that really means all that much. Okay, so I'd actually managed to line up for a collision course this time. So the orange tank was going straight into the surface of the mud, so we don't have to worry about any space debris. So nothing really to worry about there. Uh, and you will note that underneath my vessel there, I have some extra support structures. You can just see them on the inside of the engines there. I was a little bit um, a little bit vexed at dropping the engines every time I landed. So I really wanted to make sure that we could really come down with enough confidence to know that we're not going to smash everything up. Okay, so I'm desperately aiming for the flat plateaus here, but it looks like I'm going for, for one of the craters again, up until this point where all of a sudden it doesn't. I really did think I was going to be going for one there. Uh, again, I have nullified all my horizontal speed, or at least as... Um, as best I can, and then used all my flying prowess to tip my ship around and make sure it was actually zero. We got out and did a little bit of PR work. Those of you who have seen the new picture on the Kerbal Group will have already noticed this though. So everyone back in the can, it's time to head our way home because of course you don't get experience until you set foot back on Kerbin, which I think doesn't quite work because once you've been to the moon, you, you're, you've been to the moon, you've got your experience, right? It doesn't mean you, you've got to come back to, to continue being a spaceman. Like, once you're out there, you've learned what you've got to learn, surely. Well, this is what I think. I mean, like, people on the space station don't become a better astronaut for coming home. They become better astronaut for being up there and learning how to be an astronaut. That's what I reckon. Anyway, so we are going to try and leave uh, the uh, mun Munula? Yeah, the Munula sphere of influence, the same way that we were leaving it uh, when we had done that little abort sequence there. What we're trying to do is get our apoapsis on this side of the orbital line of the moon and pushing backwards as best we can so that our periaps there comes down. If Look at this beautiful orbit that I'm actually ejecting myself into. I, I think that's one of the best ones I've, I've actually managed to do. And we're just going to go outside of the sphere of influence before we have to deal with other things. Now, normally I would be like, right, we're going to stop at the edge of the sphere of the influence. We're going to make sure that everything works out exactly as we planned it but normally that means you're getting closer to the planet if you time warp all the way through stuff and that to me is good uh we're going to take a moment here to throw away these these um engines i was a little bit worried here because there was chance that the whole uh, whole vessel could just pull itself apart but that all worked well and yeah as i was saying with the time warp you normally end up closer to the planet but to me that's fine because we are coming home so it doesn't really matter um whether we get closer to the planet or further away as long as we are in the atmosphere all is working out fine now i was a little bit unsure about putting these struts on the bottom of this uh, this moon pig here i thought it well at least when the engines were there made it look a little bit silly but now now that we are coming in i think this is one of the best vessels i've ever built i mean look at it it looks amazing and with that final thought, I will say thank you very much for joining me for this experience gathering mission. We we fully succeeded here. Everyone is going to be at least level one when they come out of this. Uh, I will see you next time where we're going to try and get these guys some more experience. Maybe that will be next time. Um, but we do have some other things to do as well. We've picked up some mammoth contracts and all sorts. But I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!